Welcome back to Advanced Orthogonal with Dr. Collins. In this episode, let's talk about the horizontal film. The horizontal film is incredibly important and it's a huge component of your Y vector. So the horizontal film helps you pull off the rotation of the atlas relative to the skull. So some of the structures that need to be visible on your horizontal film include the frontal groove, the ocular orbits, the nasal cavity, the mandible, anterior and posterior arches, the superior facets, and the transverse foramen. All of these need to be visible. One, so you can determine if the x-ray is rotated or uh, if there's head tilt or whatever. And then really for your analysis, you want all of that to be crystal clear so you can do the best job possible. So let's talk about setup of the horizontal film. In advanced orthogonal, you are going to want the tube and Bucky to be ultimately 46 inches in distance. What we will do with the Bucky is actually set it up to 30 degrees, while the tube is going to be set to 50 as a baseline. So let's give you a little bit of criteria for how to determine if the patient was set up properly on the film so that when you're looking at your picture, you have kind of a litmus test to judge that through. So one, this is really obvious. The entire skull should be on the film. If you have part of the skull hanging off, both uh, too high or too low, that's not an acceptable picture. Two, you should be able to see the frontal groove that we were talking about before and the IOP lining up um, in the center of the skull line, but also having that in the center of the film. Three, in terms of rotation, you can judge that by taking a look at the ocular orbits on the film and the side of the skull, the mandible angles, and the sides of the skull. And then noticing also the frontal groove, everything is uh, symmetrical, that like the sides of the skull are all equidistant relative to those structures. And four, that the atlas is positioned just above that IOP in the window between the, the mandible and the bottom of the skull. You wanna have a nice clear look at that. You don't want the skull to be overriding on top of that atlas and certainly not to have the uh, mandible on top of it. Because with ADVO, when it comes to analysis, you're going to be using a majority rules uh, analysis for that uh, atlas plane. And you wanna make sure that you don't have any structures on top of any of the atlas. So positioning your patient properly for horizontal film, this is how I do it in my office. It's really important, obviously, like I said, to make sure the whole skull's on the film. So a little trick that I'll use is actually taking my string and taking it to the top and bottom of that uh, bucky for the film size where it's collimated to make sure that everything's on there clean. But your two most important factors to look out for are head tilt and rotation, and I'll show you what I mean. In terms of head tilt, you need to take a look at the patient from behind. I will actually have my fingers on either mastoid, and I will be looking to see if there is a uh, tilt to one side or the other. With ADVO, there is no sort of manipulating where the head is at. The whole idea is to have the patient bend at the waist as not to interfere with that head-neck relationship. And obviously head tilt is a really easy one to pick out on your x-ray. You will notice visibly that the skull is tilted on your film versus like I said, having that frontal groove and IOP lining up in the center of the film. When it comes to rotation, make sure you're taking a look at primarily those ocular orbits again on the side of the skull to make sure you don't have the skull rotated one side to the other and then also those angles of the mandible on the side of the skull. When it comes to setting up the patient for that, you can actually use your mirror, if you have a mirror mounted on the bucky, and look through and notice if through your midline on your mirror, your patient is rotated to one side or the other. Uh, with your x-rays, you can double check, and if you notice that rotation, you can actually use that motorized chair and re remove that rotation manually. If you notice that rotation, Back the patient off of the bucky, turn your motorized chair, and then bring that patient back down and head clamp them. Do not go in there and sort of manually try to remove rotation and interfere with that. I'm also a big fan of the horizontal filter. I will put this up, it has a little cutout uh, around the lead for that area for the atlas. It creates a nice white skull to be able to pull out that horizontal skull line. And then inside that window where the atlas will sit on your film, you get a really clean, it draws out all of those edges really nice uh, because the x-ray is focused in that area. Last thing is for some people, either because of the way that your, your room is, 
Uh, you don't have a C-arm exactly, the height of the ceiling is a little bit lower, uh, maybe the patient is extremely like a woman with a large bust, or uh, somebody that has really bad hyperkyphosis, you can't pull off the horizontal film as prescribed. So a less desirable but way to troubleshoot this view is to take a base posterior. So the way I will do that is I will set the Bucky up to 30 again. I will have the tube at 50 just coming from that lower angle. And then I am going to have all of the same influences that I would on the horizontal setup as I do for the BP. So I'm not going in there and moving their head around or anything like that. I'm taking tilt out at the waist. I'm having the patient pick that chin up. And then I'll actually be shooting through that instead of the vertex of the skull. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Again, this is a very important picture. You will really see that as we go into our next phase of these videos, which is gonna be the analysis side. How important it is to have a picture that's not rotated with head tilt, that you can clearly see all of those structures. I know a lot of us out there in upper cervical have a hard time when it comes to analysis, because maybe the films, it wasn't the same level of tolerance that there should have been. You want as good as you can get. This caps off our taking the x-rays portion, that first part of the advanced orthogonal procedure. From here, we're gonna go into how to analyze in the next few videos, each of those views so that you guys can have all of those gems and see what I'm doing in my practice with that though. So thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time. I would love for you guys, if you have any questions to comment, shoot me a DM if you have some technical questions or you just wanna talk about it. Again, thank you for watching, God bless.